Hello again and welcome to Pearl Magazine. The Palace Museum inside the Forbidden City in Beijing houses some of the most treasured relics, from paintings and calligraphy to countless other cultural artifacts. Thanks to expert conservators and advanced technology, these relics can now be seen by the public in their most original form, be that the actual pieces or digitized version online. For hundreds of years, the Forbidden City, located in the center of Beijing, has transformed from an emperor's palace to a museum. The entire palace itself is a witness to history. Entering the Meridian Gate in the east of the Forbidden City is the Hall of Great Supremacy, where Emperor Qianlong lived and received congratulations when he retired. Today's several palaces nearby display various collections of treasures attracting countless tourists to visit. Millions of cultural relics rely on the skillful hands of conservators to survive over time. Yang Zhehua joined the Palace Museum in the 1980s. He specializes in painting and calligraphy restoration. Recently, Yang and his colleagues have been busy repairing the cultural relics in the Hall of Mental Cultivation. Today, they're going to clean the partitions that decorate the windows. For a relatively complete one like this, we can just do minimal treatment. If the damage is serious, we will need to repair it. The traditional repair method is like using a brush, a row of brush pens. We know that cultural relics are not easy to repair. It's not like you have learned this craft and this process, then you'll know how to do it. It isn't that simple. Every cultural relic is a challenge. You have to keep thinking about better solutions to deal with these problems. So you work and learn all your life. It's a lifelong challenge. In the 1950s, the Palace Museum set up a cultural relic restoration factory and brought together restoration experts from all over the country. The first generation of ancient calligraphy and painting restoration experts refurbished famous paintings such as the Qingming Riverside Map and Five Oxen. Yang inherited the craft, and over the past three decades, he has repaired many cultural relics. One of the most difficult and impressive pieces was the scenic illusion painting inside the Lodge of Retirement. It is not an independent piece or canvas. Scenic illusion painting is an undisturbed cultural relic. That was the first time we encountered a case like this. The inner wall of the Lodge of Retirement is composed of large-scale interconnected picture scrolls, which is one of a kind in the Forbidden City. Many tourists who come to visit are not allowed to have a look at the paintings. Because of the limited space, the lodge has not been opened to the public. After Yang Zhehua and his colleagues completed the restoration, the Palace Museum digitized the paintings for the public to enjoy online. This is a good way. I went to see it. From the moment I entered the door to various rooms and corners, I could follow the lens to learn different knowledge. Isn't that the purpose of an exhibition? An exhibition aims to let the visitors know more about history. In recent years, the Palace Museum has been actively developing the digital exhibition. Apart from entering the museum in person, tourists can also use the app anytime and anywhere. And through high-definition scanning portraits and 3D technology, they can see the details of the cultural relics up close. The Hall of Mental Cultivation, which is currently undergoing a major renovation, is still not accessible to the public, but its interior displays have been digitized. We need to use all advanced technology and management to ensure the safety of the ancient complex of the Forbidden City and the cultural relics in it. 
How can we adapt ancient cultural relics for today's culture? This is a digital era. We can apply digital and information technology to the field of cultural relics and collect information about these cultural relics so that they will become permanently protected. It will help the spread of civilization and culture. The Digital Palace Museum is a product of the era. In every dynasty and generation, craftsmen would learn with a positive attitude, accepting what is trending at the time. What kind of life are we living now? It is an era of technology, which is developing rapidly. What we need to do is to strictly inherit traditional skills and at the same time apply advanced technologies in traditional restoration. Time, temperature, humidity and light are some of the factors that cause the condition of cultural relics to deteriorate. Therefore, the actual ancient paintings and calligraphy on display in the Palace Museum are sometimes replicas. From the perspective of protection, the interior is a natural environment, so it has a great impact on cultural relics. It has to be replaced by replicas, such as the portraits of emperors we see on the wall. In Hong Kong's Palace Museum, we made replicas for these. The original piece can only stay there for three months since the opening. But what about three months later? We'll have to replace the original piece with a copy. The restoration of cultural relics requires a variety of skills. Senior conservators have more experience, but the industry also needs new blood. From the perspective of cultural relic safety, the structure must be stable, and then the material and craft should be visually complete. 44-year-old Min Jun Rong is a relatively young restoration expert. After graduating as a lacquer art major at the Academy of Fine Arts of Tsinghua University in 2004, he joined the Palace Museum as a lacquer conservator. He is now the supervisor here. Today, he is repairing the gold lacquer gourd-shaped lamp from the Hall of Mental Cultivation. He says that checking and cleaning up the details are basic steps. Each type of lacquerware cultural relic presents a different difficulty. The texture and luster must be unified. The difficulty lies here. It requires a certain level of craftsmanship. Lacquerware was very common in ancient times. Some handicrafts and living utensils were painted for decoration or protection purposes. Today, lacquer restorers can use modern equipment to analyze the original materials and craftsmanship and then formulate subsequent restoration solutions. Min Jin Rong says that every time he repairs, he feels like he is in dialogue with ancient craftsmen. The process of making these is relatively complicated for ancient craftsmen. For us conservators, this is a process of researching and learning. We may not be able to reach or surpass the original level of craftsmanship, but we've been trying really hard. At the beginning of this year, Min Jin Rong and several young colleagues successfully repaired this large bell over a few months. It's now being shipped for display at the Hong Kong Palace Museum. He says that the greatest contribution of restoring a national treasure is that more people in different places can appreciate the masterpiece. The work is actually interesting. The more you do it, the more you like it. When you like something, it definitely won't be boring. The protection and repair work is very meaningful. It's also a process of learning and improving your overall ability. In recent years, it seems that many young people are becoming more and more interested in cultural relics. There was a time when over 10,000 people competed for just dozens of cultural relic conservator vacancies.
Yang Zehua, who was responsible for restoring calligraphy and paintings, also accepted several apprentices lately. He believes that cultural relic restoration can subtly train the younger generation to be more responsible for their professions. The job is worth doing for a lifetime. If you devote yourself to it, you can never stop. I think time passes by very quickly. We're living in a time and sharing responsibility and mission. We need to serve the country and the cultural relic conservation project in the Palace Museum. Yang spent most of his life in the Palace Museum. He believes that repairing cultural relics with traditional techniques can also soothe frivolous and impatient hearts. The Forbidden City is surrounded by high walls. What's left in this world? It is just yourself. It'll grind down your temperament, allowing you to calm down and study hard. This is the world you should enter. You'll be a contributor to society and will make it meaningful to give you a sense of accomplishment. When we come back, combining ancient art with modern design for daily use. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pearl Magazine. To many people, the Palace Museum in Beijing is one of the must-visit places in the city. But not everyone gets to go, especially during the pandemic. Those who love the museum's art often want to take something home with them. Thanks to designers, palace art can now be incorporated into daily items for fans to appreciate at home or on the go. An emperor's brew, the concubine's shopping bags, and a royal cat turned into an adorable mascot. These ancient relics from hundreds of years ago have survived to modern times and become the cultural and creative design of the Forbidden City. Since 2013, the Forbidden City has been actively developing its cultural and creative segment with an income of 600 million yuan in the first year and turnover of more than 1.5 billion yuan in 2017. The creative inspiration from the Forbidden City has been transformed into porcelain cups, bookmarks, tape, magnets, and so on. I bought a lipstick with flying cranes and some classical Chinese paintings on it. My favorite is this hat. You can see the wee thing with golden threads on it. Very atmospheric, very classical in a brown style. It's really beautiful. I'll probably buy food or something like clothes. At present, the types of cultural and creative products with the theme of the Forbidden City have exceeded 10,000, and many of them are developed by companies in cooperation with or authorized by the Palace Museum. We want the value and soul contained digital relics to come alive and transform them into these cultural products or artistic works that can be dissimulated. Creative transformation and innovative development keep them alive. We hope to make the Palace Museum popular. We must cooperate with social institutions, attract them to help cultural institutions such as the Palace Museum, and let the ancient museum relics play the role in a new era. This suitcase is the most representative product and has the most visual impact. It's something that people can relate to. Oh, this is from the Palace Museum, which represents the Forbidden City, so it's very popular. Sun Wen Tao, born in the 1980s, is a designer. In 2013, he participated in the first cultural and creative design competition held by the Palace Museum with his partner and won the bronze medal. 
They designed a suitcase based on elements such as the red palace gates and doornails, and this product is often sold out. Even when someone went abroad, they would carry this. It did give them a strong sense of confidence. This is something that we didn't expect. The suitcase was a success. As the cultural and creative market gradually matured, Sun and his partner decided to open a store a few years ago. They continued to develop products related to palace culture, such as these ornaments, which reference the jewelry worn by the queen. It's also designed according to modern-day usage and people's aesthetic habits. For example, in the past, it was just a hairpin. Now it may be changed into a combination of brooches and sweater chains. Through our design, the culture and collections can be known and loved by more people and then spread further. This is how we make the cultural relics come alive. We have more and more young consumers and they tend to be attracted by cute things. In the past, there were many stray cats in the courtyard and they were part of the royal family. Now, their descendants happen to be living in the courtyard of the palace as well. We also put our love for cats on the products. In the past few years, Sun and his partner have participated in many cultural and creative design events at the Palace Museum. They also frequently visit the Forbidden City. He believes that under the red walls and yellow tiles, with centuries of history, it is easier to find inspiration and transform the wisdom of ancient times into modern products. It is not just a digital value, but more of a cultural value. Many years ago, when we did not establish our own national cultural confidence, whether it is culture, movies, clothing or food, we used to believe that Western things were better and more attractive until we started to dig into our own culture, our own history. The Palace Museum is a good carrier. The poetry, calligraphy, paintings and collections, all kinds of exquisite crafts have provided us with a lot of confidence. Sun feels that after visiting the Forbidden City, many tourists like to buy souvenirs because they want to bring the culture and feeling back home. It is because of their love for the Forbidden City and that we want to associate this traditional culture with themselves. So they are willing to share it and snap it up. Behind the red walls and green bricks of the Forbidden City, there are stories in every little detail. I think every detail can be explored, and every little point I see, they can become a part of cultural creation. Zheng Cheng Wan, born in the 1990s, is a master's student at the Central Academy of Fine Arts. She began to get in touch with the cultural and creative industry of the Forbidden City in 2018 hoping to help more people understand it from a new perspective. On weekdays, she likes to look at different materials and color schemes, put these modern elements in her designs, and at the same time incorporate the unique image of the Forbidden City into products which people can relate to. From an architectural point of view, we can say the pattern of this color painting. Each specific cultural relic has temperament and style. It can communicate. I think it is a very special feeling. It represents Chinese culture. In recent years, the Forbidden City has become a hot spot for many young people. The beams and trees in the palace are not only where they can photo check in, they've also inspired trendy clothing. For example, the Pavilion of Pleasant Sounds inside the Palace of Tranquil Longevity was originally the place where the Emperor watched shows. But after a few hundred years, the bats and cranes on the stage inspired Zheng to design fashionable clothing. 
Auspicious culture is a very representative symbol of China and appears in many places in the Palace Museum. Three years ago, Zheng designed a series of forbidden city pajamas with the auspicious patterns of bats and cranes from the Pavilion of Pleasant Sounds. After it was featured on a local TV program, the pajamas became an overnight sensation. This series of pajamas has been mass produced since then. Nearly 100,000 pieces have been sold in less than a year, with sales exceeding 40 million yuan. Bat is the main character, and these five colors are also from the Forbidden City. My inspiration comes from a poem that describes the green bricks and pink walls of the palace. The distant mountains and empty valleys, and also with flowers inside. Bats and cranes represent good news. I think the way of opening also needs to have a certain sense of respect. I hope it can convey this feeling of cultural pleasure. And when put it on, I am very happy. Zhang hopes to continue to design different kinds of cultural and creative works about the Forbidden City so that more people around the world can learn about the heritage of Chinese culture and be keen to visit. As time goes by, we can see that it is a symbol of culture. And it's a very good medium to spread the culture of the Forbidden City to various places. For more than 600 years, generations of people from the Palace Museum have guarded this ancient palace, and the scattered national treasures have moved south and west to eventually be reunited in the Palace Museum. The Forbidden City bears the historical imprint. Through the past and present, this ancient culture gradually gained the recognition of the new generation. 5,000 years of our Chinese culture are condensed into these cultural relics. Vitality is the foundation of innovation. There's still a long way to go before we become a world-class museum, a model of cultural heritage protection, and a leader in the integration of cultural tourism. But we're trying to approach that which requires the participation of all sectors of society. That's our show for this week. Join us on Pearl Magazine, same time next week. Bye for now.